Now, the pound has actually been at the weakest end. Um, so what we're seeing now is the pound is, is continuing really to it, – it, it, let's go just quickly back to the daily chart so I show you what it's done. The pound has been like, you know, one of the weakest performers or the second weakest performer in the G10 along with the, uh, with the yen. Uh, it, it obviously found very good support below 149 and has bounced higher. However, again, look at that. Another nice double top there at 154. Now, why is that level important? I'm going to show you now. Just bear with me. Because it's the 38.2% retracement of the down move that we saw from uh, January to March this year. So it's important. It's significant. You've got to look at it. You've got to, that, that is a significant resistance level. It counts. It matters. Sellers came in at that level. Uh, now, where are we? Um, I don't think I'm going to take off that um, retracement chart um, because if you can see here, again, we've fallen through a major level. We fell, we've already fallen through the 21-day moving average. That's very negative. Um, we are – spare with me one moment – um, we are, you know, 152 now becomes a massive level. 152 is the 50-day moving average on the close. So that's not actually on this chart. I do apologize for that. Uh, but it's on this one. <laughs> so this is a Bloomberg chart. Don't be too intimidated by it. It's just got a black background. Bloomberg is pretty old school like that. Um, we, the Jeffrey, well, Jeffrey, hi for joining. You've said we're pricing expectations of what Carney is going to do. Well, yeah, I mean, we priced his expectations from kind of December to, to, to March, right? Uh, in that down move. And then we just thought, oh, hang on a minute, not going to do more QE. Uh, but yes, I think the expectation is that there will be some more QE, potentially even before Carney takes the reins. Remember, Carney doesn't come in until the 1st of July. Uh, there's another uh, two Bank of England meetings and an inflation report. And remember, what does a May inflation what does the May MPC meeting um, mean? The May MPC meeting comes when there is a comes on the same month as an inflation report. Where uh, the Bank of England in the past have liked to change uh, policy around about an inflation report. So while we think you know we think potentially that the 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 effort the the, B, the MPC at the Bank of England is getting more dovish, and we heard that from one of the members who didn't vote for more QE. Uh, they also uh, at the April meeting they sounded very dovish in the meeting last week. Now Jeffrey brings up a really good point point about the pound, that we could be pricing in some weakness. Now, we did get weaker public sector data, public um, uh, finance data today, which has hurt. So, basically, we're borrowing more than we said we would. It weakens kind of the, the government's austerity debate. It just makes things, it makes it even more of a mess in the UK, basically, uh, which is weak for, for the pound, because the pound really is trading on domestic fundamentals. Um, so, it's making it even worse for the pound. Um, we have that S&P downgrade. That is right, Jeffrey. You are really looking out for the fundamental data on, on the UK. That is great. Good for you. Um, but we've also got this GDP report on Thursday, which is a good point. There is, I tell you what, it's probably, out of a lot of GDP reports, probably the most eagerly anticipated one that I can remember probably for the last kind of couple of years. Uh, so it comes out 9.30 a.m. London time on Thursday. Basically, it's whether or not we get into a triple dip recession. That's really, it's a really important GDP report, even though it is quite uh, historical data now, uh, because we just haven't been in triple dip. I don't think ever, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to quite say that yet. Um, but yes, we, we haven't, um, you know, we've, we've, um, a triple dip recession is, is huge and has massive symbolic value and is probably going to just dampen confidence even further. So the prospect, I think that we're about 50-50 now of a triple dip. There's a chance that we may get kind of zero growth or 0.1%, so just about avoid it. But there is also a chance that we could, e could equally get kind of minus 0.1, which would throw us into this triple dip. But overall, this 152 level is the key level to watch. Below there, from a technical perspective, the fundamental perspective which Jeffrey has, he's all over it. Um, there is, there's a lot of reason for a weaker pound, even though we have weakened quite a bit. But I think those expectations that maybe a lot of the weakness was already priced in, maybe we're a bit premature on that. So, you know, from a technical perspective, we're testing this 152 level now. I think, to be honest, we'll probably trade around that level um, between kind of maybe 150, 150, 152, 30, if we do get below 152, that is, um, until we get that GDP report. And I think that, you know, 
whatever happens, if we get that DD approval report and it does suggest a, a triple dip, then we'll probably get, um, and it does show a triple dip, then we'll probably get a, a real knee-jerk reaction lower, potentially down to 150, even though we would expect 150 to hold. Uh, but again, if we manage to avoid the one, the one, the, uh, the, the triple, the notorious triple dip, then expect quite a sharp relief rally, actually. If we were below 152, we think we'd shoot through 152, the 50-day moving average, potentially get back to this level here. So 153.50. I don't think we're going to see 154 again. If we were, if we get back above kind of 153.20, then we think we'll be rebuffed at kind of 154.20. So that, that uh, double top, tweezer top there uh, that we saw uh, just last week. Uh, so now that's the pound. Now, the yen also has been a big mover. Now, I want to show you, we looked at it yesterday. Yesterday, it looked like we were going to really get, we were so close to that 100 level. Couldn't make it yet again. Uh, we got rebuffed there. But this is a really uh, long-term chart that I'm showing you in, your, in dollar yen. Um, this is the monthly chart. It is. It goes all the way back to. Uh, go, it's, it's a long. It's a long-term chart. Let me tell you. Um, and this has the Ichimoku cloud. This just goes to show. Um, uh, Jeffrey and Pan are saying. Uh, oh. Yeah, this is the Ichimoku chart. That's right. Uh, Jeffrey, this is our Forex Trader Pro, so Forex.com's trading platform. Um, and as you can see, this is. Um, just, what, what I, why I'm just showing you this is that one, people were saying, well, what happens around about 100? You know, what happens there? And I, I wrote something about that yesterday. It was on our website. Gave you our strategy for that. Well, you know, I'll, I'll speak you through it now. 100, obviously massive, very psychological, psychologically important level, of course. Um, but we also have, uh, you know, where we could potentially go from there. 100 was always going to be significant. We've backed well away from there now. We're back below 98.70 today on the back of um, just kind of a, 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 a stronger yen, really. Uh, the yen has strengthened. The dollar has weakened. It suggests that, you know, 100 is about, sounds about fair value, really. Um, and that's a lot of, there's been a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of talk about how, you know, 100 in dollar yen is really fair value. Um, so that we may not have too much downside to go from there. Um, but if we were to get above 100, which we think will happen, we think the market is probably looking for it. Um, you know, the, the market certainly does seem to be, uh, to want to push it down there. Uh, pullbacks have been very, very shallow. Uh, but if we get above 100, then 120, which is the top of this cloud, should act as very good resistance. So it just goes to show that the bar to getting over 100 in dollar yen is really, really high, not just from a fundamental perspective, but also from a technical perspective because of this massive resistance level to the top of the monthly Ichimoku cloud. Um, Jeffrey, wow, you should take over this job. Um, high US yields we definitely need uh, from the US, um, and we also need the Japanese people. We also need the ja the uh, uh, the Japanese investors to really um, start selling their yen because they haven't actually done that, funnily enough. We haven't seen, we've seen a lot of hedge funds uh, sell the yen, but we haven't really seen domestic holders in Japan. Now, they've started to do it, um, but they need, they need to do it in a bigger way. 